In the aftermath of the Great War, when atom bombs fell like rain on a tin roof and people had thought themselves untouchable by the firestorms of atomic war, the Republic of Texas, now lovingly referred to as the Lone Star Wastelands, emerged as an unforgiving, irradiated desert where survival is a struggle only made possible by the efforts of community and cooperation. In this desolation lies San Alamo, a vault city built upon the ruins of what was once San Antonio and the mostly intact ancient fortress the city took its name after. You see, even through atomic fires, Texans would always remember the Alamo, a sanctuary for those seeking refuge from the horrors of the wasteland, the beating heart of rebirth and restoration, a vault that did not carry out its inhumane experiments upon its population, and instead faced the radiation burnt wastes beyond its lead-lined walls with open hearts and minds. All those outside the vaults, those affected by radiation or FEV, mutants and raiders and simple wasteland folk alike, San Alamo recognized them for what they were, victims of a terrible war. Refugees to whom the vault city opened its arms and so, fueled by pre-war technology and post-war ingenuity, it is San Alamo with its bustling population and council of directors that set the laws of the land and the nearby settlements send their representatives to San Alamo and the Brotherhood of Steel abides the local laws to a point. All these folk working to restore some semblance of order to their shattered home. And from this vault, from this city of rebirth, we meet our intrepid scouts and scavengers, brought together by duty as a civil patrol, meant to keep the peace and cull the threats of the wastes in this dangerous, broken land. We see the chroma sentient mutant in his fine clothes so smart and sharp with shifting camouflaging pale skin standing tall and observant with icy blue eyes and downy white hair well if you could call it hair our enigmatic chromosentient, Lipo, who is much beloved and much feared for his strange ways, but is exceptional at finding hidden paths in the wasteland. Some say that Lipo is an exile from New Eden, but few folk who talk to Lipo can put his story together in any meaningful way. His strange way of talking, feeling like chasing after a rad roach in the dark. But with all that known, he has been in the vault for a good long time now, is known to be relatively harmless. Oh, but that don't stop mothers from telling stories to their little ones about how Lipo will crawl through their vents if they don't start behaving right. We see a glowing ghoul wrapped in slightly burnt vestments, leaning against a staff made from Scaven's signpost. A sense of benevolence and calms washes off from him in waves. The first overseer of Vault 77, now a legend to the folks of the very vault he was meant to lead. Remembered for defying horrific orders and giving the people in his vault a chance at truly living how they were promised, exiled and betrayed by those who thought that vault tech knew better. Now a ghoul, devoted to the powerful god, the god of glow and radiation, to the god of split, of destruction, of creation, of Adam and the soft glowing light that Dawson emanates. Some might even find that his faith is as powerful as many Adamites claim. We see a scientist calmly checking her rifle and medikit, 
dressed for the wasteland, but consistently taking notes on her companions. Mutations are her specialty, after all. If you were to tell someone in Vault 77 that there was a synth hiding in plain sight as a Vault scientist, few would know what you meant. Fewer would care. The Institute doesn't have its claws in the Lone Star like it does in the Commonwealth, but Celeste... Mm. Celeste remembers it, saved by the railroad and brought all the way from Boston where they thought she would be safe. Far, far away from her cruel craters as they could get her, Celeste is now a researcher with a history that few question. Plenty of folk wander in from the wasteland, sharp as broken glass and as hollow as a bottle. Her mind and her eyes are sharp. She can see further than most. We see a caravan guard, rugged and battle-worn, a scar across his cheek and a shotgun slung over his shoulder, slightly hungover but still standing at attention as he tries to put his personal feelings aside to handle the job to come. The lone survivor of a brutal Deathclaw attack, his caravan lost, seeking a new purpose. Logan Sweet, trained by the best, dealt with the worst. A local hero to those in San Alamo, brought back from the brink of death by the skilled hands of the Director of Science and the Director of Engineering, but haunted still. There is good in Logan Sweet, but those ghosts still cling to his arms and legs, crying out as they were shredded by a terror that has few equals in the Lone Star. Together, they have embarked on a journey through the Lone Star Range, on a civil patrol to keep the fragile peace. Facing challenges, making alliances, and unearthing the secrets buried beneath the irradiated Texan soil. In this world of atomic-powered wonder and post-apocalyptic horrors, they will discover their paths and forge a new future. If they manage to live that long, the wastes are unforgiven and the rads will get you just as sure as a gecko will chomp on your leg. But the problem of war... Hmm. Well, that never changes, now does it? Here in the Lone Star Wasteland, the Lone Star Range, I have with me some curious explorers, some vault dwellers from San Alamo. Say hello, my curious explorers. Hello. Celeste. Katie. Katie, Katie, yeah. Katie. What is Celeste's favorite food out here in the wastes? The mutated cow oh uh, you're straight up like into ramen the, like you just yeah. eat steak all the time just into steak it. all the time meat except rad roach marcus hello there. hello there i am marcus and i am playing logan sweets for this game logan do you have like a like a ritual you do before you leave your house mm, i feel like it's pretty I feel like it's the usual boots, jacket, oil for my arm. Uh, I feel like that's pretty regular. Your eyes, yeah, no, I get it. Lipo. It's a me, Lipo. God damn it, dude! I love you so much. I'm gonna keep you so close to my heart. What does Lipo read? 
Lipo does like to read. He reads at night before he goes to bed every day. That's so wholesome and sweet for this horrible little monster. Dawson. Deontay. Hey! <laughs> Dawson. Buddy? Now, for, like, for Dawson, he eats radiation, but, like, has he found anything that he can actually eat? The most thing he could actually taste is, surprisingly, the menthols. He, like, menthol is, like, what he really is, like, oh, yeah, mint is what does it for me. Yeah, it's the only thing he can honestly taste is mint. That's wild. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to this game. Uh, I am Jesse, your game master. I'm running this beautiful game for you. Last time we had left off. As we come into tonight's game, last time we had left off, the four of you had made a civic patrol. Uh, something that Vault 77, now known as San Alamo, uh, does to keep the Lone Star range safe, keep the wasteland safe. Uh, the four of you headed out, headed north to Canyon Lake, where you discovered that there was an FEV issue with the lake itself, very dilute, but over the course of time has been mutating fish and residents of the outpost of Canyon Lake. Following upstream, following the Colorado River upstream, you eventually found some super mutants. Uh, one of them became your friend, Grom, scientist Grom, who gave you a bit more information and insight into the FEV issue, which the super mutants have taken over a vault n along the Colorado River where they are producing more FEV. Taking this information, you headed back to San Alamo, back to your vault city where you began to give your report. You had a little bit of time to kill before your report, so you began taking a little bit of downtime as we got to see a little bit more personal information between Logan and Celeste and Dawson. As Dawson let his mask off of being this glowing one ghoul who's a, a strict follower of the Children of Adam, where he's actually a very angry man. Uh, very, very short-tempered, where Logan got to go meet with his um, engineers that handle his cybernetic limbs and to repair and get a little checkup as he was feeling a bit under the weather after utilizing a experimental system. Uh, Lipo crawled through the fence because you weren't here last session, Lee, and Lipo Celeste... was testing. <laughs> Lipo was testing a vital service for the vault. Uh, and Celeste was checking in on some research, which quickly went awry. Releasing your research, not completely to your own will, but to the will of what you were researching, a legendary creature of South Texas, the Chupacabra now horribly root mutated and irradiated, you discovered it and captured it and had kept it captive within the vault, uh, within, within its vents, which is a hell of a choice. Uh, but you were able to at least survive as it escaped and burrowed out of the vault, um, not killing anyone, but leaving you grievously wounded in the process as Logan came to check on you with a hat, some boots, and a pair of tidy whities Actually, hey, Marcus, what kind of underwear was Logan wearing? I just, tidy whities feels like the vibe, but... Uh, we'll go with boxer briefs. All right, yeah, that feels more correct. Boxer briefs, as he was getting a full physical exam to come check in on whatever the hell made that big-ass sound. Uh, Dawson also came upon the scene and y'all had a pretty detailed conversation about 
what had just been unleashed, and Celeste had been caught in a few lies. As we come into tonight's game, you had all resolved to handle the situation with the Chupacabra as quickly as you can, as it is bad news for the whole of the Wasteland. But first, you had a meeting, a debrief with the four directors of Vault 77. Let me go ahead and pull us to that next scene. Is there anything I'm forgetting or anything that y'all would like to remind me of? No. No. That sounds like everything. That sounds it. I can't remember my social security number, but I can remember every game of D&D I've ever played. <laughs> so, with that, as we make our way into the scene of Vault 77, the four of you are gathered at this point in the what was once the overseer's office, but is now the council's office. Um, the four council members are here, the four directors, uh, Marcus, Eliza, what's his name, Lucas, and Amelia Chen. Uh, they are all here, kind of just talking amongst themselves as the four of you gather. You have some time before you fully get into this conversation with them. Is there anything y'all want to do or want to say to each other before we get into the full, like, role play of this scene? Celeste would have gotten there first, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I was waiting for everyone outside the door. All right. I have not gotten in yet. Lepo just crawled through the vent into the room. Fucking choice. Uh, after after doing vent. his after doing his little shopping trip, he immediately heads there. All right, you would probably get there last, Dawson. How about you, buddy? We'll be arriving there probably at the very back of the line, taking a deep breath, getting back into my zen with the atom. Oh, just taking a moment. This has been. A stressful couple of days. And as you come back to like your center. Boop, boop, boop. I'll move us right here. So, has this scene loaded for anyone else, or is it just me and Lee? I'm on 99%. I'm reloading oh, right now. God damn. Yeah, this is a big map. I loaded in surprisingly easily. Yeah, that was wild. You were just. There. So. The magic of Lepo. The magic of Lepo. <sighs> Celeste, I think let's start with you. Okay. As you arrive first and you wait for everybody, the office you stand in outside of the uh, council's office is honestly no one really works. There's a couple of secretaries who occasionally come here to do some um, little busy work, but it's quiet within this office. Is there anything that you do while you're here? Um, Celeste just kind of contemplates the whole thing. Maybe she does a checkup on her wound to make sure that it's not going to need anything too severe that she's going to be able to handle this beautiful meeting. Yeah, I think, especially because he got stabbed in the shoulder, there was yeah, considerable. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to pass out. You did hit yourself with a stem pack, so in a general sense, you're okay. But go ahead and do a medicine check for me. Medicine it's fighting. Roll. It's starting. Yeah, low rolls first. Just get him out. Just straight him out. Uh, on a 12, you... Like, there's a little bit of stiffness. The stim packs work. They're just a little miracle in a jar. You know? Yeah. Uh, you're going to be fine, but there's still a little bit of evidence that you were 
you know, bloody not more than a few minutes ago. That's okay. You hear a sound from behind you as, like, a grate is moved aside as Lepo crawls out of a vent. Hello, Lepo. It's nice to see you. No. Again. What, what happened? I was in the vents. I'll tell you later. This isn't the time. Hmm. Okay. Who wiggles out of the vents? And then she'll just she'll hang she'll just come over here and hang out with Lipo as she waits yeah. on everyone. They're just generally talking. Yeah, just soft, genuine conversation between the two of you. Dawson, you're the third to arrive. As you come through the door and you see your compatriots, having found your center again, how do you enter? Yes, I will come in nice and calm. And just look at everyone and go, Hello, my fellow Adams. Hello. Hello, Hello. Mr. Hawkins. Please, call me Dawson. Will do. Will do. Now let's finish with this mission so we can go to a bigger situation. I think as soon as you like finish saying that, Logan walks in fully strapped up with a bunch of new weapons. Yeah, Logan walks in. He's actually taken a big swig out of his, uh... We're just gonna say canteen, because I can't remember the, the other word. Flask? Flask. Yeah. He just takes a huge hit drink from his flask as he walks in. He glares at Celeste, and then just goes and stands. He just goes and stands in the corner. All right. Four of you arrive within this space as eventually you hear the voices across the doorway, uh, quiet, and footsteps approach as the door opens, and you see Dr. Eliza Mendez. She peers through and says, I, um, I'm sorry about intruding on whatever was going on earlier. I think it was a medical exam. Um, but we're ready for you now. Much appreciated. And Logan will head in. She leads y'all in. Uh, mm -mm -mm. As y'all come into the overseer's office, the council office now, you see Marcus, you see Amelia, and you see um, Mayor Lucas, who is, of the four directors, is looking the most stressed out. He is, like, flipping through reports and looks up at the four of you entering and says, Oh, goodness, okay, hey, uh, Marcus, I, I mean, Logan, Logan, God, I've got 800 people in my head today. Uh, Logan, great job. So happy to see you. Um, what, what, why, why, why this? I've got, I've got so much to be doing today. Logan tips his hat to him and says, you need to take a, you need to take a breather sometime. But, uh, unfortunately... Looks like we got a bunch of super mutants that took over a vault and they're uh, producing FEV. That is unfortunately 
been leaking into the lake. To the lake? Can he turns to Director Marcus and he says, "Super mutants. That that's your pur purview. Why? <laughs> hey, uh, what what's what's up with the super mutants?" Uh, you see Director Marcus put like a hand on the mayor's shoulder and he says, now you don't need to be so. What have, are, are you been taking your chems again? Of course I've been taking my chems. I've been taking my chems every hour. You're not supposed to be taking that many chems. <clears throat> Thank you, Logan. Uh... No, we, the super mutants, we've been, we'd known that they've been moving. They took over a vault. They get River City? What's going on? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see the, wait, actually, did I see the vault number? You don't know the vault's designation. You would know at the very least it was not River City. Logan looks at him and says, well, it wasn't River City. Uh, I guess one of the more intelligent mutants uh did point out where they're at, and he gave us a genuine general number of how many there are. Said hmm. there's at least forty in there. I can uh here I have my map with me, and he walks up to Marcus and shows him the map location. Apparently, this is where they're located. The other directors begin leaning in just a little bit closer, looking at what's going on. Um, in this moment, you see, like, you see, like, Marcus looks confused for a little bit, and he says, Son, are you sure? That's where the mutant said. He's here. He's, uh, I believe he's getting interviewed right now for, uh, application to the town the Seemed mayor, like, a like looks folk. up and he says you brought him here that that's the guy i've been getting calls about the 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 grom guy yeah he turned on his uh fellow mutants preferred a more well, intelligent group well that's god yeah, that's good news for us i suppose yeah he oh. seems like a decent folk so i think he'll be all right well, everyone's welcome here in 77. <clears throat> tell, I'll tell you now. I don't, I don't know what we can do about this. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just the face. Uh, I ain't expecting you guys to do anything. I just at least want to warn you. Just in case we get them start wandering towards us. Oh, speaking of things that are wandering towards us. There was a brotherhood camp over by What was the name of the place again? Canyon Lake. Canyon you need to start Lake. taking notes, my man. I do. Uh <laughs> um, There there's a brotherhood camp set up by Canyon Lake. They're not supposed to be that far. Uh, you see, Dr. Dr. Eliza, she says, we had an agreement with them. They have Camp Bolis, but that's the camp that they could have. Were you able to talk to any of them? What, what did you get? Uh, unfortunately, with my current party, walking up to them was not a good idea. You see the four, like, directors look at your current party, and they look back to you. And they look back to, like, Lipo, this strange mutant, and Dawson, a glowing ghoul. And the doctor's like, that was very prudent of you. I suppose we could contact Camp Bolas and ask some questions. This isn't quite to the accords, but they may be pushing their boundaries. No in the Brotherhood, probably. But those are the two main things I want to bring up to bring up to y'all, and it was just much faster to tell you than to try to pull the pull. 
Marcus looks out towards uh, Dawson. He says, when you were out there, did you have any issues with other ghouls? Or was it just super mutants? Deontay, buddy, you there? Most people, most ghouls will attack me on sight. They still see me as human. Interesting. But usually a little bit of radiation. Get some docile. Holds them down. Good to know. Give us a little bit of time to go over this information. We're gonna... I know about the super mutants moving around here, but they've not got a foothold here in the range due to the Brotherhood and, well, ourselves handling them. They've been fighting against the Blood Legion and the Eagles as well. But if they're producing FEV, that's a problem. I also have some unfortunate news to spell. Oh, yeah? What is it? The Blood Eagle. I had one of a ghoul friend track them for a bit. They're f- tracking something important up north, which is strange. It's all that my ghoul friend could get without getting spotted. Yeah. This is concerning. To say the it least. Is um, tell you what. You've all completed your mission. This was a fairly short recon, but your civic duty is completed. This is good information, and there's obviously benefits and bonuses that come along with this, but for the time being, would you mind not disbanding? We may have more work for you in until we deliberate amongst ourselves. Uh, well... We can definitely do that, but uh, unfortunately, we have an emergency call we have to go deal with. A uh, local scavenger I know needs us to uh, head out to him. But I have my radio if uh, anything urgent comes through. Or... Make a deception check, Marcus. I will give you guidance. Okay. A little bit of guidance on that. You get a D4. <sighs> deception is not my thing. Nope. Oh, D4 oh, on D- that. Uh, D4. Mm-hmm. Two. 16. As you, as you... Like, as you begin uttering this lie to these people who are regularly <laughs> lied to and, like, have to deal with politics and shit like that, you see, like, most of them just kind of shrug it off. Um, but Mayor Lucas squints his eyes at you. He says, Okay, Mr. Sweets. I mean, hey, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Am I right? We'll, uh, we'll hail you if we need anything, and if you're needed back here at 77, then we'll definitely let you know, but... Oh, man. Super mutants. Uh, if, they, if they've got a foothold here in the range, that's a major issue. Well, I would like to add that my companion, Mr. Sweets, did not, is that they were being commanded by someone named Brutus to also collect the FEV. Not just dump it, but to collect it. Brutus. And it's at this point in the conversation that uh, Amelia finally, like, looks over and says, Brutus? Yes. Super mutant named Brutus. Yes. You can even ask Gom, Grom to verify. He was there when we overheard them talking about it. We need to contact the Brotherhood of Steel right away. You four are dismissed. Thank you for your reconnaissance. We'll send you your caps and bonuses in the coming days, but for right now, just stay together like Marcus said we'll 
Uh, we'll we'll contact you in a little while, I suppose. Go do your thing with your friend. I'd like to do an insight check. Go for it. What in particular are you trying to grasp about her right now? I'm trying to grasp how much worry she has. In a general sense, there is an immediate... She's just kind of been here for this conversation, like flitting through her pit boy and looking at schematics. But as like the name Brutus is brought up, she's actually clocked into the conversation. Um, she's not pleased to hear that name. You're not really sure more than that. I actually meant to do a history, so my bad, on Brutus. If you want, sure. Yeah, I actually clicked and say I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. History on Brutus. For you, you don't really leave the, you don't really leave your research wing no. a whole lot. You occasionally go out into the wastes on your own, but Brutus is a name that you do not know. Okay. You would know at the very least that like Brutus is a historical figure, you think? Maybe in some sort of a play or a movie. Very well referenced. Greek, maybe Roman. Uh, I so real hide easy. No, you're good. I I know that just the person to ask after this. Cool. With that, uh, Director Chen begins like just turning away from y'all as Lucas uh, says, "Oh, okay. I guess she's talking now." Uh, yeah. Hey, y'all get. Get uh get on out of here. Uh, shoo, shoo. Uh, get giddy up, giddy up. Man, we gotta Logan. work on that. You're way too north. As like Marcus, yeah. like, like, go on now, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. When Celeste heads out, she will remind them that there is a bunch of amber-colored Nuka Colas that they can drink from. They look a little exotic. You remind who? The council. You know who has that? Do they have it with them? You don't have it. Grom has it. You gave it to Grom. Oh, Grom does have it. Well, Check your now own. they know Grom has yeah. it. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, hey, Grom has a bunch of uh, basically cocaine Nuka Colas. You should drink those. Yep. Right. And, he's gonna have, and then Celeste will head out. All right. Dolphin. I'm staying here. You're staying there? And I would like to talk to them. As the three leave, the door shuts behind them. Dawson, you stay in the room. Amelia looks at you slightly, like, annoyed, and she's like, What are you doing? You've been... Oh, it's you. Okay. So, you were out there. What do you, what do you think? must worry that if the Brotherhood are planning something as well as the Super Mutants, this vault may be in the crossfire as a result. So as my children of Adam. Well, the, that's, yeah, typical. I, I can't imagine that the Brotherhood is happy with how we've been handling the political situation. Uh... I'm not sure what they're handling, but if they're trying to find Brutus, that's something that we should assist in as quickly as we can. Very well. But I must ask for a favor then. What do you what do you want? You're not the overseer. You're not either we don't have an overseer. You're not on this council. Marcus like holds up his hands like, now hold on. Pay this man some respect. What do you need, Dawson? I need you guys to just let in one goal. Just a quick one. 
she's she's a little off, but please let her grantage and savior. She's a good child. She's following the good path of Adam. Redemption. Make a persuasion check with advantage. As like Mayor Lucas is like, oh my god, a child ghoul? Good thing you got advantage. With a 19. Like, he's like, oh, you mean like you, you are constantly calling people child and that's really confusing for me. Uh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, I could easily do that for you, Dawson. No, no, no issues. Uh, same, it's that Coco lady, right? Yes. I, I was getting concerned. You keep calling people child. I'm like, oh my god, is there a ghoul kid? How long have they been a child for? Have they mentally developed or are they still a child? I've got a lot of questions. Usually a ghoul brain is stunted after maximum radiation to the brain. Kind of just stops. You stay the same. Really can't change too much if you've been your way. Huh. That's, that's interesting. All right, well, yeah, no, I'll definitely grant passage for that. Uh, I guess citizenship within San Alamo is not too difficult to really give out these days. <laughs> Just uh, please, if you do, bring the Brotherhood of Steel here. Remember, they don't do anything for free. They don't and do anything I walk. they don't want to do. And I will leave. As the door opens again and Dawson comes out of his, like, private meeting, uh, having said what he needed to say, the four of you gather again in the outer atrium office of the uh, council's office. Oh. All right. Well, that's dealt with, and I'm pretty sure the mayor knows I'm full of shit. So, uh... I guess grab what you guys need, go to the store, grab rations, water, whatever you need. I guess we'll get out of here. Let's see what? if we can pick up our caps in advance. I fear that we may need them. We should go it's the mayor that deals with that. Yeah, mayor and he ain't, he ain't exactly... The most willing man to uh, hand out caps, even after a job's done. Well, that's not that much. Well, ignore that. Mm -hmm. Lust will just nod in agreement, take a pack of smokes off the secretary's desk, <laughs> and just head out. And she's gonna go hunt down <laughs> Grom. Alright. Then we begin coming into a more narrative focus here as we uh, spread out throughout the vault here. Oh, gonna move these guys out of here just so I don't have to look at them for a little bit. Uh, with that, y'all are fully capable of, in a narrative sense, what do y'all want to do? What You're capable of moving through the vault, finding resources that you'd need. Um, and if you want to get paid in advance, you possibly can. It's just gonna be you have to like catch the mayor after this meeting or something like that. No, I'm just going to Grom. You're just going to go to Grom, okay. I'm going to go Grom, then get rations, and kind of wait for everyone. Cool. Yeah, Logan just heads straight for the exit. He's for just going to wait for everybody. Awesome. For entrance, yeah. Uh, he's just going to wait okay. for everybody there. Um, I would like to get my water skin and fill it with radiation water. From, like, the, from the reactor? Oh, yeah. That is a excellent decision. Yes. Lipo, what do you want? Lipo is going to go to the trader and trade his extra item. And then Hell, buy, yeah. buy things. Oh, boy. Time for some math. Everyone's favorite part of D&D. &D. <laughs> All right, buddy. Tell me what you're selling, and I'll work it out from there. Lipo is selling one machete. 45 caps. 
two pieces of two sets of leather armor. Seemingly only ten caps apiece. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all Depot wants to sell. All right, you get sixty-five caps on top of what you got, so you have. 71 caps Actually, in total. Is there, is there anything that's the that's a difference between a machete and the sword? The short so sword? Uh, short swords are machetes. I just, you know, re reskin them as such. Uh, okay. Uh, Lipa will show both like the machetes then. Oh, alright. Cool. Because he has a short sword already. In total, you have 116 caps. All right. Then Lipo will buy 10 more days of rations. That will be five caps. Okay. And what what's his what what's the seller's inventory looking like? What what's he got for me? Inventory. Let's look at what we've got. As he, like, Why is Lipo growing green? I don't know. I hit buttons sometimes. <sighs> Let's see here. So, as far as inventory, you go ahead and roll an investigation for me. Maybe I'll find something good. Have something good. That's a nat one. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, as you're, like, looking at this, at the stock here, you're pretty sure that there's nothing interesting or good at all. Outside of, like, what there is, you see, like, there's just, like, a bunch of, like, guns that look, like, a little scrappy, like, they've maybe thrown some shit together, which don't look reliable to you at all in this moment, as you're like, I gotta get out of the fucking waste. Um... In a general sense, they've got, like, ammo, guns, and weapons, but you don't find anything that really tickles your fancy. The Lipo wants to buy 11 more bullets of 308 and 14 more bullets of 10 millimeter. Got all of the math. And this is, of course, a more, uh, <laughs> so you'll have 60 rounds of 308? Yes. How many rounds of 10 millimeter did you need? Um, 14 more, so that would put it at 50 altogether. 61. All right. You, you know, you know, it's not hard for you to do this. You pass your caps over as Lipo. You come into the, like, the trading area and, like, just the person behind the counter is like, Hey there, Lipo. Uh, got all your fingers? God, I don't know how to talk to you. You're real scary, honestly. What do you want? Lipo drops all the leather armor and the two machetes on the table and says sell to you and then buy from you okay yeah yeah whatever you want man uh and like it's just like a rush of like he's just like giving you money and like putting things together for you as like he just like puts things in like a backpack and just hands it to you and he's like thank you please come back another time but maybe not too soon okay see you soon <laughs> Crawls in through an up. air vent. Just panic vomit. People then crawls into an air vent and disappears. You just hear, I think, like crying, just like, I didn't want the day to be like this. <laughs> in horrifying. Just, I love, I think in my head, like you walked in through the front door and you're like, here I am. And then you left through the vent. Yep. 
Then let's Ooh. focus a bit on our dear friend Celeste. Let me. Oh my god, where did I put Fromm? Put him over here. Big old man. Big old... Yeah. Huge map. Celeste, it doesn't take you very long to track down Grom as, you know, like, in a general sense, he's free to walk the vault. He's not under detainment. And you find him in, like, a supply closet, like, looking at everything and just marveling as he looks as like you find him in like almost like a I say supply closet janitorial supply closet it's just like incredible all the organization everything's put where it needs to be oh hello there Celeste <laughs> pleasure to see you here in this broom closet hello Mr. Grom it's so good to see your face again at least a friendly <laughs> face for sure um, if you wouldn't mind, I have a few lovely questions for you. Of course, yes, whatever you would need of me. Well, I'll cut to the case. There's no point in beating around the bush. I'm about to go off on another expedition. Do you know anything about Brutus? Oh, yes, I worked for the man. Very, very bad man, I tell you what. Just very, mm, mm, very rude. Could you tell me more, like... No, oh, he's very what? big. Uh, smart. He <laughs> carries conversation quite well, but I, I don't like talking to the man. Um, did What type of jobs did he send you on? Do you? My point is, do you have any idea of anything that he's planning? Oh, yes. He's uh, creating more FEV. Hmm. Do you know any more than that, or...? Are you, like, grilling him for information, or, like, what, what yeah, are you, I'm are you just, trying to I'm get just out of him? Meaning, I'm just trying to think. Um, do you happen to know where Brutus is from, by any chance? Oh, yes. He very rarely leaves the vault. He is probably there, doing his commandering and all that. I would say he's definitely at the vault. Oh, okay. Well, we the council was asking, so I was just hoping to get more info. If we run into him, I would hate to go in blind, if you know what I mean. No. Is your expedition to go and handle him, as it were? No. According to Mr. Lo Mr. Sweets, we're going to go handle some scavengers. Mm, scavengers? Not... Very meaty scavengers. I tell you what. What, 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 I, I am starting to get the idea that you're asking me about Brutus because I am, in fact, a super mutant who worked with the fellow. Uh, oh, not out of, um, just general interest. Well, you are my only source right now, Gron. But I am mm. obviously also coming here to see you. I'm hoping oh, this so nice. vault is treating you well. No one's tried to kill me or called me names. I love that. The council might also come and ask you some questions as well, but... Oh, it's very fun to hear the word council. Do they, <laughs> Maybe? Do they wear funny hats? Perhaps? Do they wear suits? What, what, makes, what makes them... They wear council? suits. But maybe one day you could be on the council and wear a lovely, funny hat. <laughs> that would be a banner day, wouldn't it? A super mutant like me on the council, uh, lording over you pathetic humans. Oh, that'd be the day. Well, you have my vote, Grom. <laughs> we vote for this? I'm going to have I don't a great know. time. That's a great well, question. Then. Figure of speech. Local politics aside, Brutus is a very strong individual, powerful in his own right, uh, but domineering with his charisma. The other mutants look at him as a master of sorts. Uh, I, I don't buy into all that. I just, I think he's 
very attractive, some would say, but I think he's a bit of a poppycock. That's good to know. Thank you, Grom, so much. I have... I find anything interesting on this expedition. I'll make sure to get you a gift. Oh, speaking of, do you want these back? As he like pulls out his the inventory that like he's been just carrying for you. Oh no 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 no, that that's okay. Um, they've come up a lot in this conversation. But the, when the councilmen come over and talk to you, they're actually going to take a couple of those. Um. Nuka Colas. Feel free to sell the rest and take your fair share of caps. You did carry them for me. It's very kind of you, Celeste. Thank you very much. Well, no, thank you, Grom, for being a part of our lovely vault. But I'm gonna head out. Mr. Sweets and all the others are waiting up on me, so. I'll get you something nice. Oh. Oh, you know what I'd really love? Some rad scorpion venom. If you can really, just the real fresh stuff, I'd love it. I think I might actually have some on me, funny enough. Do you? Uh, DM to have... player, do you? No, I have the scorpion stingers. Ah, uh, yeah, you've got little uh, baby rad scorpion stingers. You don't have full venom, right? Yep. Um... Plus, we're like, well, Grom, I'm gonna head out. I hope you do well in the vault. We're glad to have you, or at least I am. And she's going to. Plus, is gonna head to the um, supply and get some rations. This time for the trip, right. so she's not hungry. <laughs> Fair and fine. So, how many days are you gonna get? Oh, God. I'm gonna say three. To just be safe. All right. So that's gonna be like two caps. Two, just two caps. Okay. That's not bad at all, actually. Days of rations. Let me just go ahead and pull up Lipo's sheet because Lipo has rations on his sheet. Don't you mess with Lipo's rations. <laughs> Lipo won't even know. You are now encumbered. Keep that in mind. Oh, I am? You weak little baby. I am. That's okay. I'm going to dump some things off when I go outside. I don't need to carry vial of fish scales and seaweed with me anymore for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why you don't want that. I would um, carry that with me everywhere. I don't. My only thought is I could probably... I also have a glass bottle of unidentified slime. Yep, just some goo. Um, could I drop these files that I have off it just off in my office so I can delete them out of my inventory? Let me go ahead and like make a little inventory sheet for you. Okay. So that that way I can just drag them onto that. What vials do you want to get rid of the acid and the oil the... and stuff? Yeah, the fish scales, seaweed, the rad scorpion stingers, and the uh, unidentified slime, along as much as I love carrying it, along with Javier's face. <laughs> you don't want to bring yeah. Javier's face with you anymore? No, I'll keep it. It's a staple at this point. It's something you really... Do you need a grappling hook? Is that something you think you need? No, I'd rather keep my crowbar more than anything. All right. We'll get rid of the grappling Watch hook. now we need it this mission. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> fucking crazy. I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing you had that grappling hook. Oh, wait a second. Um. And then so. I guess, yeah, that's... Cool. Now I'm not horribly encumbered, right? Or am I not... still... Yeah, you're still a little encumbered, but in a general sense, I'm going to say it won't matter too much. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Y'all, again, reconvene outside of Vault 77, uh, making your way together again after buying whatever needs to be bought. I, I, Celeste, like, you come into the shop, and there's just, like, a guy who's just, like, shaking a little bit, and, like, he looks over, and he's like, 
Oh, thank God, it's not Lepo again. Uh, Tread's action goes well other than that. Why are you crying? I'm so scared of him. Who? Lepo! Celeste just does a scuff and just walks away. <laughs> Pretty much calling him a coward in a way. Yeah, just a bitch. Yeah. Uh, with that, y'all make your way out towards the entrance of Vault 77, which sprawls into the bustling city of San Alamo. The four of you find each other fairly easily from here. What do y'all do? Uh... Logan will look over at Dawson and say, Dawson, you said you could track this thing, right? I think I can follow its unique radiation. I will try to investigate the area around the vault to see if there's any hole pops. See where he dug up. Do a I... survival with advantage, because you're oh. trying to trace the radiation. What yeah, do you gonna do I'll right? also do survival. 26. Right. I need a flat survival from you. 26? Wait, why flat? 26. Oh, still leave, like, paw prints behind, shouldn't it? Well, you guys could have advantage from my notes. I'd That's also I like to add guidance on that. No, I'm kidding. Sure, do it. Guidance. Roll a d4. I got 16. But I, it wasn't needed because so Dawson fucking nailed it. <laughs> yeah, Dawson's just like fucking connecting with the atom in a way that you cannot comprehend. And you're like, yeah, I'm just trying to find like paw prints. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly As... what Logan was trying to do. He's just like. Like people are like still like moving around here. Like there are people within San Alamo. And as you're like looking for like where it could have popped up. Dawson is like almost... Actually, you know what, Deontay? You go ahead. You describe how you tracked this thing to where it popped out of. I think I would just close my eyes and kind of feel around to see where radiation gives off kind of a little bit of heat to see if there's any heat that I can feel that's going into the direction of where the hole popped up. As you're, like, seeking out this, like, different warmth, there's a lot of radiation around you. People are working on cars and building up and, like, fixing buildings. The welders are going right now. There's... Uh, there's a lot of like fusion cores that are being used and there's a lot of background energy but as you focus in cutting through the background noise of everything you find that streak of just dark of like hateful radiation easily you begin walking through the streets in slightly like a trance-like state, eventually coming to a five-foot diameter hole in between a couple of buildings, hidden away in an alleyway. This is... That's the hole, Lauren. This is where you dug out from. We should go from here. Quite amazing how well it can do. Let's all hope your research was worth something when we have seen it. My research is never wrong. Dawson, with this incredible survival check of 28, you would know that this thing is heading eastward. Right near fucking. You said east? Mm hmm. It's going to Adams Bay. There are a couple Bay. of places out east. Adams Bay. There's also a, 
a rocket stop, a red rocket refuel station. There's also the scar. I would like to go. I would like to travel from. One, two, three. Okay. I think we'll go from. I think we'll stop at the mega. Mega rocket stop. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll guide everyone there and kind of just point at the map and be. Go. Our first probable guess would be the mega rocket stop. I have a feeling it might have gone there at war first. And then from there, it's either gone down south to Adams Bay or east to the Scar. That's where the most walls are at. All I know is this thing has been locked up for a long time and it's hungry. So it's gonna go wherever it can for food. Somewhere preferably where it won't be found so easily. No. Well, if it's hunt for ghouls, definitely in Adam's Bay for Scar. But you lead the way, Dawson. I'll head east to Mega Rocket Stop. So, getting into the nitty gritty of travel here. Traveling along the roadways is going to be a lot faster for y'all. Traveling through wilderness is going to be slow. Just keeping this in mind as y'all are moving forward. Um, the highways are mostly cleared and have been to some degree restored. But this is going to be a little bit hard. So... Let me check something real quick. We're still fairly early in the morning. We're getting closer to noon. I would love... This is a fairly easy check, but I would love a group survival check. I got 16 again. 16, awesome. Lee, you roll. No, I did not. What am I rolling again? I'm sorry. My headphone. Survival. My headphone jacked up for a second. <laughs> Lepo. Lepo didn't do good this time. Guidance. <laughs> Interesting cases. There's no amount of guidance that will help that, but okay. Hey, if it, it could be an easy one. For five. Uh, with a six. Group check wise, y'all pass. Lepo, I just imagine as y'all are like doing this travel, you leave San Alamo behind and you get on the road. I feel like Lepo's just trying to crawl into vents that are not there. Lepo just wants to be in the vents. Logan, just every now and then, will be like, Lebo, we, we're, we're going this way, buddy. But, but the vent! There, there's no vent there, buddy. Let's, let's keep going. I see it! I see it! Just, just come on, buddy. You can, you can climb in vents later. Let's, let's just keep going. Lebo follows. Grumbling the entire time. Quickly, are y'all moving? I'm traveling as fast as Dawson is. Fast, Dawson, you're leading the march here. How fast? Are, how fast do y'all travel? Just so we're all on the same page, there's different travel speeds for like overland travel like this. Um, there's slow, normal, and fast. Y'all could go fast here, but you get a minus five to passive perception. And you move four, you can move 30 hours in a day. Or 30 miles in a day of travel, if you move fast.
I say we do normal. We don't want to burn ourselves out. Yeah, it does get hard. <laughs> normal, right. I agree. Yeah, a normal, a normal speed. Okay, so thirty-four miles. Twenty-four miles. I'll get just about here then. Beautiful. I'm gonna do a little doodle here, as y'all leave. Right there. All right. Y'all begin getting outside of San Alamo proper, moving along the roadways, which are relatively safe. With the four of you working together, you manage to get yourselves out into the wasteland proper. You're now outside of the city itself, and it is quickly becoming nighttime. We're getting closer to dusk here. Y'all up to? Do y'all set up camp or do y'all keep going throughout the night? Yeah, we'll set up. I'm gonna suggest that we set up camp. We set up camp tonight. Yeah. Lipa wishes to eat food. All right, give me just a second. Believe that. Rom out of here as we come to our little camp. Y'all set down camp for the night, getting yourselves fed. Go ahead and mark one ration off your sheet, and if you need to, you can make a long rest since y'all have rations now. Lipo always had rations. Lipo had a fuck ton of rations. Leap out, but more. Long rest. Yes, long rest, long rest. How do I? How do I get rid of one ration? How do I do this? Just use it. I just click on it. Yeah, you just clicks on it. Oh, oh there. Success. There just, ha ha! The ration. Who takes watch? Lipo. Lipo takes watch? Lipo, go ahead and roll your perception check for me. It's real good, buddy. Lipo, as you take the watch for the evening, can you get the rest you can? As you focus in on the world around you, you get a little bit lost, as in the distance you think you see little white figures popping up, looking at you with these bright, big black eyes as they duck down back into the ground again. Leap out. Leap out wish to investigate. Investigation. Like to keep a close eye. Are you taking a rest right now? I have deathless oh. nature. I could still have my conscience. All right, consciousness. Lipo. Give it to your passive perception for the next part. Though. Lipo, That's good with nineteen. Me. Tell me what you're doing, buddy. Lipo, it gets on all fours. And Low crawls his way over to where he was seeing the eyes and pokes his head out from over a bush to look around. As you, like, poke your head out into the bush, with that investigation, that's a pretty choice investigation, as you're moving further ahead, you... You think at first you're seeing these white figures with these big black eyes, and there's a little bit of hope in your heart that it may be one of your own. Go ahead and move your token about 50 feet out of camp. 50 feet. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Nope. Zoom out a little bit. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
hearing we focus. There we go. One, two, there, there's 15. You said 50. Mm -hmm. Right about there. Okay. People click there. People click here. Right there. Go right there. That's good. That's 50. As you get just a little bit outside of camp and you're just low crawling through the dirt into the brush, you are able to see further on into the dark as what you had thought was in your heart of hearts another little lepo that you could have talked to are just two boat flies, two bloat flies just bobbing around. Meepo wanders on back. Stealthily. <laughs> Roll that stealth check. Seems <laughs> really good. As like you get, as you realize what these things are, you begin backing off. You just hear the as they don't pay attention to you as you begin to sneak your way back, moving away from the horrid, radiated insects. Lipo poke Dawson. Hello. <laughs> There's things over there. What kind of things, brother? There, there were blood flies, but they didn't have any interest in me when I went and looked at them. Lipo is still on all fours, by the way. Let's not worry about it. If they're not interested in you, don't be interested in them. The bow wanders back over. All right. Other than that, nothing bothers your rest for that evening. As we go about our next day in the Lone Star Wastes. And look at this. This is going to be a couple days travel. You may be able to catch up to the Chupacabra uh, if you... If you quicken your pace. You do have a good, like, bead on where it's going, at the very least. Uh, yeah, we may want to pick up the pace the next day. All right. I agree. After your long rest, breaking down camp. Day. Dawn. I love to keeping track of time. Early in the morning, the four of you get yourselves ready, resolute to see this through. You begin making your way just a little bit quicker this time along the road. Everyone go ahead and do another survival check for me as y'all move forward at a faster pace. Oh. Damn. Damn. Oh, thank God. I got 10. 10? If it wasn't for Dawson... Actually, this is a group check. Y'all fail. Oh, uh, shit. Bless on Celeste. Bless on me? Bless? You mean Guidance? Guidance, yes. Jesus. All right. Oh. D4. Bless, let's see. Come on. Oh! 13. 13. 13, 23, and 7. You manage to pass this check. All right. As you move forward, the the four of you really getting your 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 stride together, striding forward along the waist, the Texas sun beating down on you through the irradiated atmosphere. Dawson, you feel I'm gonna say midway through the day as we get to high noon you begin to feel that dark energy beginning to move around you 
You're just Thank about, you. if I'm going to mark y'all on the map, just about there. Your full day of travel would bring you much further. 30 miles is nothing to fucking sneeze at. Yeah, right about there is where your full travel is. But as you begin approaching the Mega Rocket, uh, it's still some distance away, but you see signs for it that are slightly charred and burnt from radiation and ancient bombs. Uh, you begin to feel that energy. You begin following it, trying to sense it out with your own. You are very close to this thing. What do you want to try to do? It's sensing doctor. What is it mostly trying to get? What is it hungry for mainly? What is it hungry for? Yes. It, you would know in a general sense that you would know from what like you learned from Celeste's research. Um, is that it feeds off of irradiated blood. Yep. I was just about to say that. Thank um, you. I couldn't get the word out entirely, <laughs> but yes. You're good. Uh, Celeste, when you ask her, she looks at you, Dawson, and she's like, likes blood. Really strong radiated blood. And you can see she's holding her knife out, She's holding her knife in one hand, and her hand is extended toward her left hand is extended towards you, like insinuating to give me your hand. Doc, how about you hold up? We don't even know if it's here yet, and I'd prefer not to use Dawson as bait. Oh, we're not. We're only using Dawson's blood. I wouldn't sacrifice Dawson as a whole. I'd be foolish. A sacrifice. I will not be. But bait. I can be. It has... I'll hand out my right arm. Lay it on top. I'll go ahead and roll perception. Um, Katie, I am... roll, roll an attack with your dagger. Oh man, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't do it as a medical thing. Sorry, Dawson. That is. No, you were just like, I have my knife out. That is all I have. I guess I have my healer's kit. I got like 18 on perception. 18? With an 18 on perception, as the blade is drawn across Dawson's ghoulish flesh, that soft green glow of his radiation brightens for just a moment as his blood unnaturally green and bright spills out onto the ground in soft drips with an Logan takes five, five, step, five steps away, five feet. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, oh, fuck that. Uh, let me look at this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. As you step away for just a moment, looking, looking around, keeping an eye out, you, even in the midday sun, begin to recognize that there is something dark about this place. You're a little bit off of the main road, but there's something... Something's digging around here. You can feel it. You can hear the ground shifting. But immediately in front of you, about 70 feet out, you see a... I'm trying to find the right word for these things. A borrow? A horde. Oh. You see ghouls wandering aimlessly, but when that irradiated blood spills, they turn their nose to the wind, and they look, and you see that 
from where you are, at least, you know that ghouls have a hard time seeing, but their sense of smell may be great. Their hearing is exceptional. They don't exactly know that you're here yet. I'm guessing these are feral ghouls. Easily, yeah. Uh, Logan pulls out his combat shotgun. There's no need for violence. Dawson, I respect you, but those are feral ghouls. They don't care about you. They don't care what you look like. They don't care what I look like. They're going to try and rip us apart. can't see. They smell the blood. I was hoping the Chupacabra would smell it first, but... Just throw the blood in the other direction quick. It'll give us more time to run. I'm going to move us to the battle <laughs> shot for this. How far away are they from us, Jesse? About 70 feet out. Oh, they, 70 feet. Uh, there's, there's still there's... some good distance away. They've just been wandering, and the thing about ghouls is until you know they're there, they could just be a pack of them just over a hill. Does anyone have a telescope on them? No. Something I could see, used to see them closer? A scope of some kind? When Lipo loads in, Lipo can check. I don't have nothing. But Lipo did a stealth, and he rolled a 23. I don't know, 70 feet far. Feet is far. I wanted to... Oh. Considering like 70 feet in real life, right? That's like, yeah, mm, that's not a driveway too sometimes. Like, that's usually like a good sized driveway is about 50 feet. Okay, yeah. Um, can I go ahead and do an investigation? I want to see if maybe these are ghouls created from the chupacabra. That would be an insight arcana, or yeah, I'd say insight arcana. Come on, dice, please don't fail me. 24. On a 24, it's very easy to tell that these are not typical okay. ferals. These oh, are God. definitely victims of the Chupacabra. So last, just in case, loads her rifle and she's like, you know, these are victims, I guess you could say, from the Chupacabra. So it looks like I was right after all. Logan will look at Dawson and say, As much as I wish we could just leave them here. I'm sorry, Logan. They're in danger to whoever passes by here. Dawson, what do you do? Been touched by the wrong item. Sadly, I have to agree. Just be merciful. To... Be quick with it. Alright. Try. They do smell the blood and they will begin making their way towards you. I would like to throw... I got a 21 for initiative. I'd <laughs> like... Yeah? I'd like to throw the blood... Northeast. Northeast. Like over there? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I would say roll a. Just roll a dexterity check for me. You manage to throw a bit of blood. You just swing your arm out and the blood splatters along the dust and dirt. Probably some of the only uh, 
wetness that this soil has tasted in quite some time. Uh, I'll say for purposes of this, since you did get 11, I'll put a little circle here. That's where your blood is. There you go. You get a little bit of blood over there. But to be fair, there's more blood on you. Yeah. Right. Do you want me right. to do patch you up a little bit, Dawson? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use, for the first time, actually, I'm excited to use it. I'm going to use my medical kit, my the healer's kit, kit. on right. Dawson. Uh, Action? I, can I pick up a decent sized rock? Sure. Like one to There's five pound rocks? Go ahead, uh, roll your medicine for me, and then you can roll a d4 depending on how high you get. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's rocks all over the place, buddy. Oh well, my he god. The biggest, he picks up the biggest rock. Yeah, there's a lar There's a whole minecart over here, and a whole fucking... There's like a big rock over in this area. Uh, with a nat 1, Celeste, you're a little clumsy here. Roll a d4 for me. Oh, shit. I'm gonna have to try it again. Sorry, Dawson. My mind is on a lot of things. Dawson, as Celeste is trying to, like, patch you up, she's a little bit clumsy in this moment of field medical, not really expertise, and it kind of tears your skin a little bit more. Delicate. I'm not Sorry. Fle I'm not flesh. All right. At this point, I... I'm gonna oh, roll a real oh. quick check. Let's see here. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah. They have a minus two to this, and it's still got a fucking seventeen. You see one of the ghouls turns and looks, sniffing the air, just. <laughs> As the warn the others. Listen. I, at this point, will need y'all to roll for initiative. Shit. I'll try to heal you again, Dawson. Alrighty, roll for initiative. Oh my gosh, my dice got st stuck on everyone else's dice. So my... Five plus two. My so like, initiative roll? got stuck between the dice and the wall and so it kind of jiggled a shit ton and then it just That's hit so five and I was like well this is my day do you want to re-roll could I that will help you <laughs> I don't think so but I can if you'll let me do it I will yeah go ahead sure roll, roll initiative you have a seven. Oh my oh, god do you, want, do you want the seven instead yeah oh. I gotta get my bad dice rolls out so I can heal you. Maybe I'll get a 20 <laughs> for you, Dawson. You know Top what? of the me. round. It'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> Top of the round, Logan Sweet. As you All do right. see the ghouls start their attention really starting to be paid to you, you have this, like, 5, 10 pound rock in your hand. What are you up to, buddy? Uh, I'm gonna rage. <laughs> Yeah, he quickly, like, hits the button on his arm, and he will start going forward. Don't think they're in range. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Bam. Okay. And then... Okay, so this should... I believe, from what this explained, it goes... It can go in a straight line 90 feet. Oh, you're casting Catapult. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the glowing one. Alright. So you just see him, like, do the weirdest, like, wind up with his arm, and he just chucks this rock. Holy shit! Just... His, it's, I feel like it's almost like, cartoonish. You just hear like like a, as this rock moves, like fucking straight up baseball throw, 
you knock this thing in the side of the head as it immediately turns, its glow brightens as it, it like really recognizes that you're here as it just screams out in rage at you. I pick up another rock. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your turn, buddy? Yeah, that's my turn. Alrighty. Dash action. Russian right there takes a dash. Cannot attack, but definitely rushes towards you, just furious and flying in rage. This ghoul gets right up in your business. Are they. What are they saying? I do speak ghoul. You do speak ghoul. These ones, you would, in a sense, understand that they are just hungry. Do 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 do. Hey, Dawson, I need you to make a con save. This isn't a hard okay. con save for you, but uh. Yeah. Eighteen. Eighteen. All right. You take a do 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 do. That's exactly the damage I rolled too. You take nine radiation damage. That's fun. Bring you down to twenty-one. When you're brought to fifteen, you will be considered like permanently poisoned, taking everything at disadvantage. The rads hit you like a wave. Uh, shit's rough right now, but you're at least handling the worst of that. That is all the glowing one can do. do. That'll take us to the furious ghouls. Open to the radiation. God, there's so many of these little shits. Have fun, everybody. And they're just gonna hang out there as we go to Lipo. Lipo, you are super hidden from these guys with a 22 on stealth. Lipo is gonna pull out his hunting rifle mm -hmm. and shoot the glowing one square in the noggin. Yeah, go for that. A 20 sure as shit hits for 10 piercing damage. There's Doesn't the... that add sneak attack damage to it as well, or is that only yeah, with melee really... weapons? Okay. I need to go, go click my sneak attack here. Sneak attack. There you go. Extra four, four more damage. Points of damage. 14 points of damage on the glowing one. Looking confused, it shifts and turns and looks at what just hit it, barely spotting Lipo after the attack. As, As it... that happens, Lipo uses his bonus action to, uh... Hide? I believe this is the one. To hide. Coming action. Yep. I'm going to use his cunning yeah. action, and then he will just doop, doop, boop, boop. Boop. Roll that stuff right for me, and then we will move on to Dawson. Lipo. Dawson du, 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 du. Holy shit. 27 on stealth, not 20. Lipo's gone. Uh, Dawson, you do speak ghoul, and you do hear that these ghouls are furious and hungry, and they feel so drained and dry. But this glowing one is leading them to sustenance. What do you want to do, Dawson? It is. They're gonna follow that. Um... I'd like to do command on the glowing one. Command? Okay. I would like to say flee. Ooh. Ooh. I hate those. 
Dice down at the narrative. Uh, fastest available mean. You utter out the word of Adam. It's looking into this radiation cloud that uh, Logan currently finds himself in. And you utter the, the true Adam unto this glowing one as it flinches. That bright green blood dripping from its head, mirroring your own in its own way. And you know that you've struck a terrible nerve within it. It will flee. Celeste. Okay. Uh, Dawson, is that all you do? Um, do I have a spiritual weapon? Do you? I do. I'll take the cast as my That's bonus good. action. Fucking love magic and fallout. I'm gonna assume you want it somewhere over here. Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Alright. 15 hits the glowing one for 12 points of force damage. What is your spiritual weapon? What does it what does it appear as? It appears as just a glowing radiated combat oh. knife. Alright, hell yeah. Just an irradiated combat knife begins to move from the ground and float within the air as it stabs into the glowing one. That'll take us to Celeste. Manipulating the atoms around you. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. I'm not gonna shoot at them. Um, sure. I wanted to know, I'm reading my prim criminal gosh primal awareness um mm -hmm. and i wanted to know if i could use that and i want to see if this this subject lucifer is within six miles of us oh yeah super duper okay do i just roll it i mean uh, it's what? an action not game oh. Do you want to spend an action to do I, this? I do. I just clicked it, but I... Hold on. Let me try right. You spend a spell slot to do this. Did I... Alright. Where you get? Oh, there it goes. So you oh, I guess your I did. Prime Evil Awareness and your Primal Awareness. Primal primeval replacement. size is okay. what I wanted to do. Here's the important thing. Primal replaces primeval. Do you want primal or primeval? Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I generally, oops. I think I like the, the primeval a lot better. All right. Then that's what we're going to be using. All right. As you look upon the battle before you, you begin looking within. Uh, following types of creatures within a mile of you or within up to six miles. You are technically within a favorite terrain here. Um, yeah. Let's say for purposes of this, there are a bunch of undead in front of you, so you can feel those for sure. But you do also somewhere deep below the earth. Somewhere near, within a mile, you can feel Prod Subject Lucifer, the Chupacabra. Oh. It is within a mile of you. Okay. That's your action. What are you doing? Yep. That was... That's it? Yeah, I'm just going to stay here. Just inform everyone of my discovery. All right. Logan, on to you. Uh, Okay. So I'm going, so I'm going to draw the shish kebab and Ooh. swing at the one behind me. Go for it. Yeah, roll. Oh, oh. Uh, I, I did not mean to roll that twice. <laughs> Either way, that sucked. A 10 does not hit. Uh... I love you, buddy. I would take that 16, but 
Not today. You want to roll it with your oh. physical dice? I'll let you roll it with your physical dice. Do the attack. Right. I'll, I'll roll with physical the dice. See attack. if. Uh, of course, it gets stuck. Eight. That's yeah, not much better. Uh, eight plus six. That'll hit. Cool. There's a moment of uncertainty as you bring the the shish kebab to bear. This honestly beautiful form of flamer and blade as it like comes to life in your hand. I think this is your first time using it as you like maybe put too much gas in it as you roll three or four times to see if you hit. Uh, you do nine slashing and one fire damage as the ghoul is slashed across the chest. Nice. Is that all you're doing? Uh, can I try and kick it over? That, that'd probably also be an action, but... That's a bonus action. Go and do a do an athletics check. Oh, cool. Mm. No. Man, these things hate me. All right. Well, I need to get out of this radiation one way or another. So. Sure do. You do not end your turn there. You do not take additional radiation damage. Good job, buddy. Uh, that cool does good. Oh. He just chases after me. Yeah. Multi attack. Nine and a ten. Absolutely don't hit our big boy Logan Sweets. So the Reavers got the glowing ghoul. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Oh no, that's right. This thing's gotta flee from you. It's Shit. fleeing. It's fleeing. And it's using everything with that die. It's got a dash. Its radiation goes with it. That sucks ass for me specifically. The furious ghouls look confused as the other like their <laughs> the fucking the big ghoul just starts running away 30 feet 30 feet 30 feet you know what i'm gonna actually roll for these ones over here Success, fail, fail. Two of them will run back full dash into the radiation. One of them continues onward with a full dash. Right up to there. All right. Lipo. Falling Dawson, out. you are up next. Alrighties, Lipo is going to trade his rifle out for his pistol. Mm -hmm. And then he is going to... How far away are all of them? That one's like five feet or ten feet-ish. That Eight, one's... Four five. And 55. All right. And the pistol can shoot up to 90 feet. So. 10 millimeters. Lipa will shoot the... I think these two will handle this guy. So Lipa will shoot the one right in front of Logan. Yeah, make that attack for me. And, Dude, then that's a lot of damage. and then there's the sneak attack. Good God, my man. And then he'll add his steady aim as his bonus action. All right. Good job, buddy. 
Make attack roll. Mm, that is something you do at the top of your turn. Oh, I thought that was at the end. That's something you could do because of the that bonus action you can give yeah. on your next attack roll. Yeah. On the current turn. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, so. Okay, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll take us to okay. Dawson. Oh, we'd like to call Divine Favor. Okay. Oh. Can flare it. And hit the guy in front of me with my quarterstaff. What does your quarterstaff look like? A very well, broken to town. Broken down staff. It's honestly part of the sign. It's just a metal sign part without the stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it's just a sign pipe. Yeah. So as we've previously discussed, radiant and necrotic damage are forms of radiation. So you hit this ghoul with one bludgeoning damage and then heal it for two radiant damage. Well, quite the confusion. Um, I guess I will try to... Hmm, do I have... No, I use my bone section. I'll end my turn then. Right? Celeste... You watch Dawson, like, channel the radiation through his, like, pipe staff and hit the ghoul in front of you. And then it's like, it honestly looks a little bit better than when he hit it. <laughs> That's definitely going in my notes. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just reading something. I was debating on making this ghoul in front of me a favorite enemy, a favorite foe. Yeah? Yeah, I just wanted to read how... Yeah, I'll make it a favorite. I'll make it a favorite foe because I'm gonna an attack first. Okay. Because there's no way I'm gonna try to shoot this thing with a hunting rifle up close. Yeah, that would be a disadvantage. Why am I rolling? All of your ranged attacks right now are a disadvantage because yeah. it's right up on you. I might have to reset my foundry real quick. Do you want to roll for me, Jesse? You're doing your attack with your combat knife. Yes, my foundry is. Just oh. not... That's a nat, nat 20. 20. That's dope. For not a lot of damage, but still, to be fair, like, a nat 20 is pretty, pretty good time for you. As you, like, look at this thing, you reach out with your combat knife and get it right in the jugular, pulling away as you see the tooth marks from where the chupacabra has obviously fed upon this thing. You rip away. There's no blood that spills from the wound. But you see that you caused a great deal of damage as its head now lilts over to one side. Damn. Um, I have to roll something, and I'm going to tell y'all a fun secret that I've been holding from y'all. Oh. oh no. Nat 20 is going to instantly kill you. What? what? If I get a nat 20 on you, you have to make a constitution save, and if you roll, uh, it's 10 plus the damage that was dealt, or 13, whatever is lowest. Uh, yeah. Or whatever's, uh, I think that's it. I'll look at it. But basically, if you get a nat 20, it is a critical hit, and it could instantly kill you or an enemy if they failed the check. Oh. One. 10 plus 4 failed the check. You straight up killed this thing. Oh. Oh, is it like the, uh, what's it called when you go in that little weird combat mode? Fallout? Oh, you use vats. Is that what it technically you don't is? You a pit boy, but I would love oh, that to be true. Yeah, like you just focus in. You see exactly the the location where this attack has to hit, and you I think you just take this thing's full head off. Just <laughs> with just Holy a knife. Wow. Uh, Alright. That's 
was not expecting that. That's wild. How did, is that what Celeste is reacting like in this moment? Yeah. That's choice. He's like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to keep it alive, but yeah. That's one I'm trying to keep loving. things alive. It could tell us where it got bit. You have movement, but other than that, uh... Wait, I just realized I was started. muted. Sorry. You're muted. Uh, can I pull my sledgehammer out with my left? With my offhand? Sure. Because it is a warhammer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to swing at this thing with both my fish revolver and my warhammer. Mm. No. Huh. They're both one-handed. They don't, they don't have the light weapon uh, tag to them. Oh, right. You need a special special thing to... You don't, you don't need a wield. feat for that, but if you're dual wielding... Uh, you will. You can make this attack at disadvantage if you'd like, but the shish kebab nah, ain't worth is, it. Yeah, shish um, only doing fire damage on top of everything else. Yeah, it's also my enhanced weapon. I actually just mm. remembered that, so it so should be getting a plus, plus one. a plus one to both attack and damage rolls. One second. There you go. So there that's. That is 16. 16 absolutely hits. Go ahead and roll the damage for me. 10 slashing. Damn, that was better. I feel like you roll with your physical dice and then Foundry's like, oh, you got a 16? Well, how about a 22? It does that sometimes. And then I'm like, why? When I, just, when I just roll with you, you give me shit. But the one I act... Fuck He's you, jealous. He's a little jealous. It's like, I could, what, what do you think your physical dice have that I don't have? Yeah, ten, ten slashing, six fire damage. Again, swinging out with the shish kebab. Just this great force of nature and flame and steel. A, a whoosh of fire you slash into this slightly armored ghoul. I don't think it's happy with you in like a big old general sense. I think that 19 proves it. You do take half damage as you are raging. Taking a total of six damage, the Reaver claws at you. Its hands already torn away, its fully emaciated, desiccated body. Uh, just mostly skin and bone. It just claws wildly. At you. Glowing one. Command only works for one turn, right? Um, it should. Uh, I think they have to do another save every time. Oh, buddy, I have something terrible to tell you. The only last one. No, the spell has no effect if a target's undead. Oh. <laughs> These fuckers. Fucking hate clerics. <laughs> no. I'm so sorry, buddy. Yeah, Let me go ahead and move, move this all over the here. way back. These oh. fuckers. Uh, for good purposes, though, I will remind you, it was your turn. What do you want to do with your spiritual weapon? Attack the fucker again. The glowing one, ghoul? Go ahead. Yeah. Roll that spell, but don't consume a spell slot. Nat 20. You know what? Foundry's being nice in this moment. As I'm like, oh yeah, this oh, thing yeah. doesn't work on the thing. And it's like, oh yeah, well fuck you, Jesse. Uh, 15 points of damage smashing into the glowing one ghoul as it brings its radiation back with it. Uh, damn. Roll that dice. Roll that dice. <laughs> Damn. Uh, glowing one ghoul. I'm gonna say just for, just to be kind, I'm gonna say that's all it can do, bringing these other ghouls back with it. 
uh, in this cloud of radiation. A furious ghoul. Let's let's do some shit. They, I have. Wait, I still have an attack. You still have an attack? Yeah. What do you think? No, 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 no. It was not your turn. Oh. Fuck. I was just housekeeping. You had a spiritual weapon on. Oh, that did shit. not do anything last turn. 30 feet. Lepo did not hide. 30 feet on Dawson. Dawson, you gotta feet. get back here. I mean, Logan. Let's see here. I've got one, two, three, Logan. four, five of these guys. One, two, three, four, five. Logan. One of these. Two of these could have been. Because they are. Right. It's a good From thing. the top, a 16 does hit Lipo for a full 8 slashing damage. A 15 does hit Logan for not 7. 3 slashing, 11 does not hit, 21 does hit, but still half slashing, and 10 does not hit. These. The ghouls move with rage and fury in themselves as they are overwhelming Logan in this moment. Lipo, what are you up to? Lipo's gonna pull out his short sword awesome. and he's gonna shank a bitch. Get, get to shanking. YouTube's not gonna be happy with how often he does, but you know what? Fuck him. 22 for sure hits. So and then, because you're a swashbuckler, you can just yep. stick to whatever the fuck you want. That's the whole point. The rakish audacity. So you can hit and then just walk away from this one. Yeah. And Lipo's going to uh, disengage. You don't have to. You just walk oh. away. Because you have what? fancy footwork. I need to read that. Can't make an opportunity attack against you. For the oh. rest of your turn. Well, then you Lipo's just going to gonna walk you just have away. To make a melee attack against it. Yeah. Lipo's just going to walk away, and his bonus action will be to hide again. There you go, buddy. Where are you going to and where are you hiding? Lipo's gonna do 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 do. <laughs> yeah. You go like all the way around and you're like, I'm gonna hide right here. This one ghoul gets like stabbed and then like it's like you're playing peekaboo with it. <laughs> and there's the stealth for it. Let me check this thing's passive perception. It looks like it, it's just like <sighs> it just has no idea where you went. <laughs> Dawson, that takes us to you. Alright. I guess I'll shoot with my hunting rifle. This feral ghoul right here. Right. Yeah, make that attack. What? Hold up. Oh, do, do. All right, make that attack now. I fixed it. 18 hits, 9 points of piercing damage. You shoot this feral ghoul right in the middle of its chest as it leers back, getting hit pretty hard. And then for a bonus action, I'll use my spiritual weapon to attack again. And that glowing one's getting fucked up, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, that hits yeah. for sure. Seven points of force damage. That glowing one is looking not great at this point. 
Um, I guess move I'll end my turn. Um, I'll move here with my oh, old blood. With your glowy blood. All right, that takes us to Celeste. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this lovely guy that's on that, that very the sweet baby. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Logan can only take so many hits. So Logan can really only take so many hits. He's at like less than half hit points right now. Oh my god, this game! I'm gonna roll a D. Oh god, please don't shoot me. <laughs> you are so incredibly lucky, my dude. I was gonna say anything under a 75 is gonna hit Logan. That's how Logan died. He got shot in the back. No. Oops. <sighs> I mean, you have 15 hit points. That would have been bad. Logan. Top of our round, Celeste. You do still have movement in this moment as you totally wing that shot as it goes wide into the radiation cloud, almost hitting Logan. What are you doing, Celeste? Getting out I'm of just here? trying to think why I can move. I will move 10 feet over this way. All right. That'll take us that way. Time. I have a shot, I guess. <laughs> That'll take us to Logan. Top of the round. Round. Uh. Five. Um. Okay. I even try to walk away from this spot, but like three potential opportunity alone. One, three, four, five, five. <laughs> like. No, what you're if, right. Three. What if I? Technically, I'm not leaving any enemies' areas. What if I just move right here? You would be leaving this one, you would be leaving this one, and you'd be leaving that one. A little bit. Pocket. I cast Sanctuary. Oh. This is the only way I'll have a chance to survive. You just see, you just see Logan like lift his hand into the air, and just like a sonic noise comes out of it that confuses the enemies near him. Oh, that kicks ass. Okay, so that's your bonus action. Uh, and uh. Honestly, I'll just swing. I'll just swing out with my fish kebab because I can't right. do my job. Ooh. Fuck nice you, game. Your favorite. I'll let you oh. roll physically. Fucking found no. you being nice for a second. No. No. Um, I have to deal with my, the consequences of my actions. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to hope that sanctuary at least keeps me alive till the next round. Hey, the luckily Reaver these guys are dumb as shit. <laughs> they're dumb as shit. The Reaver so, attempts to attack you, cannot even make the action. Alright, blowing one ghoul. Wait, he yeah. doesn't attack- oh, right, he either loses the action or- That's right. He can't, like, choose a new target? There's, like, three <laughs> next- there's two yeah. next to him at least. Would Wait, you attack your ally if you had to choose a target? I mean, if I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Oh God! You know what? I I will say that that was not supposed to last that long, but there is still something else. Let me just check. All right. Just to be fair, now y'all know what you have to watch out for. This one does have a radiation aura. Dawson has his under control, but this is just a burning aura of radiation. The glowing one ghoul ends its turn right there, 
as our furious ghouls make their actions, this one has no idea where you went and is going to try to go and find you, which gives you an attack of opportunity on it, Lepo. Which is also Prepare. a sneak attack because you're hidden. Jesus Christ. Prepare to die. Oh my god. So good. Yeah, six piercing damage. Make. <laughs> Fucking. Do the sneak attack on it as well. Leap. 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 All right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. This one's going to try to attack. Let's do these wisdom saving throws. One, two, three, four. Two of them actually get to hit. All right. Hmm. Yeah, bud. Rough. With a total of eight points of damage done to you, you are looking pretty rough right now, Mr. Logan Sweets. Furious ghouls have gone. That takes us to Lepo. It's me! <laughs> boop, it's a boop. Lepo time! It is, it is! Lipo commits a stab. <laughs> Lipo's really good at stabbing. Five points of damage. Sneak attack he, on top of it. He commits Six more stab. More stabbings occur. This ghoul is barely up right now. I need to do something real quick. Fails. Falls over dead. Then Lepo you... hides. Lepo stabs and hides. That's just kind of Lepo's whole deal right now. Boop. Get to hiding, buddy. You are hidden. Well, you're hiding in the same place, and it feels very like Bethesda Fallout. Like, where did they go? Must have been the wind. Dawson, what are you up to, buddy? God. Have, do I have anything that good to help him? Pardon? Okay. Don't you straight up have healing? I only have cure wounds. Oh, buddy. I don't have, have healing get more prepared. If it helps, I plan on disengaging and running away. Let me... I wasn't planning on these ghouls having this much health. That's fair. I thought they would have less, because usually ghouls don't have a lot of health. Yeah, usually ghouls are not a problem for the main character, huh? I mean, right. even for side characters, they're usually not a problem. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll give you Shield of Faith. get a plus two bonus to your AC. Awesome. Um, then I would like to move 20 and down, down, boom. Um, they're attracted to the blood, so I would like to bleed a little more Mm -hmm. To get them to come near me first. Roll a d6. Let's see how much damage you do to yourself. Yeah. An additional point of damage. You wanted to roll though. Hurting yourself is not great. As you squeeze the wound and more blood begins pumping out of you, this glowing radiated blood, you see... I'm going to roll a d6. These three right here all turn away from Logan and focus on you. That's 
good. And I'll end my turn right here. Because I can't move anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attempt to shoot one of them again. Preferably this guy, hoping that if I can get a 20, I can shoot through him and hit this guy. But knowing works, my luck... I'll allow it. Okay, awesome. Knowing my luck, I might actually kill you. So... Don't. I'll oh, say with the shield of faith and the ward, you're not gonna hit him. Like it just would not make any narrative sense with all this techno oh, magic go. occurring. God Putin does hit. Okay. In the Furious School? Yeah. This guy. Alright. Hell of a choice. You shoot the one ghoul next to Logan as it <laughs> turns and stares at you, uncertain and unsure. With an angry. You can mark that one as your foe. Oh, I okay. I wanted to act if I could do that because I didn't get to do it on my my um last one. Okay, so mm -hmm. do I just roll a one d four? Who did I miss? Okay. So you mark it as the favorite foe. Whenever you hit it later, you do you increase okay. the damage by one. Okay, could the I... First time on each of your turns that you hit it, you deal more damage. Oh, okay, okay cool. Dope, dope. <laughs> all good. Got that one marked. That's, That's cool. all for that. Top of the round. Okay. For Logan. I'm gonna go ahead and disengage. Smart move, my man. Which is an action, so 5, 10... 15, 20, 25, 30. And I'm going to put away the Sish Kebab and pull out my shotgun. All right. Which has you... the repeating shot. Awesome. What does that look like? Is it like a drum barrel? Yeah. Like a drum honestly, magazine? Honestly, I kind of imagine he has the shotgun modified, so it's just like connected to like his robot arm. Oh, that kicks ass. With a drum mag on it. Point of order, you did not attack this round. Your rage drops. Wait, but I got hit. Why? <laughs> you took damage. Let me check which real keeps, quick. Hold on. Which keeps my rage going. <laughs> if I get hit or if I hit someone. Have an attack the hostile creature or taken damage. Yeah, you're right. Okay, cool. Keep your rage. I was wrong. Yay. All right. Ghoul Reaver at this point steps into the radiation. I'm gonna roll a con check real quick. Wanted to succeed, failed. does not regain hit points from the glowing one. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, gets right up in your face, makes two attacks. Oh, fucking hell. That's gonna hurt. Celeste, that hurt like fuck. Yeah, uh, it is. Seven points of slashing, I need you to make two constitution saving throws to keep your concentration on that mark. Oh yeah. Oh shoot, I actually did. Let me do saving. My bad. Oh, that's dexterity. Gosh dang it. Game. <laughs> I hate this sometimes. I swear it doesn't register you're anything so in play. You're just like, you're just freaking out right now. Okay. Uh, failed. You need you me to your... do. Block. That's me. Don't even worry about it. Your mark is dropped. Glowing one, it's right, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh right no. Oh my god, 12 damage? 9 bludgeoning and 12 radiation damage. Oh my gosh. So, let me just do this real quick. <laughs> I just went from full health to like fucking 
half health. So fast. Not even health. Oh, you're resistant to that. Hold on. So that's. I do have some resistance. It'll be six instead of twelve. Okay. Cool. There you go. Shit's bad right now. I oh, yeah. I also need you to make a DC 12 con saving throw. Oh, God. You fail. You are currently radiation poisoned and cannot regain hit points until your next turn. I fucking love this game so much. <laughs> oh. Lipo! Lipo's fine, by the way. Nothing bad has happened to Lipo. Lipo got, got hit, hit once. Yeah, once. But Lipo's gonna pull his pistol out, and he's gonna shoot the glowing one. Good idea, buddy. Well, I don't think that hit the glow. It did. It oh, good. Doesn't have any armor. It's just a naked genitalia is. Uh, just glowing motherfucker. Six points of sneak attack damage. Ooh, it's getting close. <sighs> Lipo, you aim that shot just just past Logan and trying not to hit Celeste. You aim between them. You pull the trigger. You see this glowing one is bare, just barely standing at this point. This fury of fuel is going to try to attack Logan. 24 does it. Man. Logan, you are not down yet. You are very close. Meanwhile, over here with Dawson. Dawson, these ghouls approach you cautiously. Unsure. And they look at you, and they look at your blood, and they look hungry, and one of them growls at you. Feed. Um, is that the end of the turn? They, uh, they're just surrounding you, and they're not attacking immediately, but they are talking to you, you bud. Are they feral enough to be animals? Considered animals? They're definitely feral, but they're communicating through at least how you can understand them as ghouls. Um, I would like... To just give him a little bit of radiation. I'd like to do. I'd like to open up my radiation just a little bit. Just to give him a little bit. Give him one of my rat health. Just one? Uh, you know what? Make it four. Make it four. All right. Sometimes you just gotta throw a question mark onto a statement and just let your players make choices for themselves but really <laughs> with that as you burst slightly with radiation the atom pouring forth from you these three ghouls bathe in your light as they are now allies Then I would like to, as an action, do mm -hmm. bless oh. on to Logan. You get two more targets with that. Who else gets blessed? Lebo and Celeste. Radiation descends upon the three of you like a halo. You see the swirling movements of the atom around you as you feel 
just a little bit more capable. You feel a little bit stronger, and though, Logan, in this moment, you are delirious and bleeding and hurt, how do you feel when this blessing is put upon you, Logan? Mm. Sick. Sick? He... He's thankful for the help, but he... He has a very high dislike of radiation. All right. Dawson, that is your action. This is now a concentration. What do you do with these ghouls? What do you tell them to do? I tell them to grab the false glowing one. Roll a persuasion with advantage. Come on. Good. It's better. 16 is better. They growl and grunt at you as one of them just rushes forward, bathed in your radiation. Gets advantage because his flanking with Celeste. <laughs> Pretty good. Six points of damage. Undead fortitude on this. Just one second. Constitution saving throw. This glowing one is resilient in itself. The attack tears away chunks of it. Celeste, you watch a ghoul come up behind it and begin tearing into it as it pops itself back up with just a little bit of radiation. The second one. The does not get advantage on this attack. 11 does hit. 8 slashing damage. Con saving throw from the glowing one ghoul. Damn. Damn. Stays up. The last this ghoul. motherfucker is living. Fucking glowing. glowing. Moisturized in, in its lane. Saving throw. Fucking oh I rolled the wrong one. Let me just let me just make sure real quick. Uh saving throw. It stays up. This motherfucker ain't Wait, going down. Let me make sure, make sure. I'm at fortitude. Five plus the damage taken. Yeah, for sure. Stays up. Damn. Celeste. I'm gonna stab this that glowing month. bitch. You have advantage. Oh, oh thank God, God I have advantage. <laughs> oh, Dude, this saving game is hits. not having it. I need to start rolling my real dice. Saving throw. Come on, Please get lower, a lower. lower. Make a 10. Meets it, beats it. Uh, yes. This, this glowing one is just being stabbed and torn apart by its by what was its like congregation oh. and like then celeste reaches out and stabs into it and it's honestly artful but this thing you can see still uh. barely up looks at you with its glowing eyes blind and hurt and just goes oh, oh. i wanted to keep you alive Logan, Logan, your turn. I'm gonna take a step right oh, so here. Oh, I need you to make that. Uh, no, you don't. Never mind. You're good. I'm honestly just gonna try and line up the shot. <laughs> line up the shot. You do yeah, not get disadvantage it. on uh, shotgun attacks when you are in close range. Oh, so. awesome! Cool. Please don't hit me. I will die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's. It's a dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. Make that, uh, roll that damage for me. What? Oh, I know. I keep forgetting I have to give, I have to, like, make your guns have ammo. One sec. There you go. Make that attack. 16 points of damage to the to this guy right here. Yeah. Easy. Just is a bl incredible shotgun blast that just tears out a huge chunk 
out of this glowing one. Not this glowing one, this furious ghoul. Is that your attack? Is that all you got? Or are you still alive? Uh... No, I'm gonna try and kick it into the other one. Why not? Alright. Yeah, athletics check. At least not Advantage, because you are raging. Oh, cool. Uh... Eighteen. Eighteen beats ten. You kick this furious ghoul into the other ghoul as it, like, falls over, thrown and, like, just knocked around this weaver over here. I'm gonna do a deck save for it. Stays up. Damn it. The reaver is going to come to you since you kicked it. Fuck you. Stop no, rolling so well, Jesse. <laughs> no. I never get to kill my players. 19 hits for 3 God damage as damn Logan's it. sweep goes down. Currently unconscious and prone. That takes us to the glowing one who is barely alive. I love y'all. Thank you for playing this game with me. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do the virtuent anymore. Gonna try to do one more slam attack against... Celeste, 22 does for sure hit, 6 points of bludgeoning damage, your radiation damage, half of that would be 5. You were down to 19 radiation resist. My God. Radiation hit point. When you get down to 15, you are poisoned. Leap on. You just Leap watched the Logan go down. Lipo did. Lipo did. Lipo is going to shoot the glowing one one more mm -hmm. time. Fuck. He's naked now. Should be. Ten? Yeah, ten hits. Eleven. Oh. Five plus eleven. This might be the one that kills him. Oh, shit. Let's find out. Oh my god. Yes! Get it! Okay. And then Lipo will run over here mm -hmm. and step right in front of Logan. In between. Lipo, now do you he is in. Check real quick. Perception. Did I run to the wrong body by chance? No, you're good. A 10. A 10. As you rush over, you see that there are some stim packs on Logan's person. Oh, Lipo has a stim pack. Lipo used stim pack. Where, where, bonus where's action? Lipo's? I didn't you know that was a bonus. I thought I did. I thought I saw one on me earlier. I used one of his. Logan is back up, still prone, but no longer unconscious. Lipo is in Logan's face, yelling, LIVE, LOGAN, LIVE! <laughs> Logan, after just barely coming back to consciousness, is just like, Okay, I'm alive. Oh, I love that for you. Furious Ghoul, this one has to spend some, uh, its whole, half its movement to stand up. And then attack Celeste. I hope it misses. It better miss. And that twenty. You gotta be I hate shitting this game. me. I would have fucking died. You die. gotta be shitting me. I need you to roll a Constitution saving throw DC one two one. God. You do have less on it. Hey, Katie. 
No. <sighs> I'm what so is... upset. That's fair. We just had like this big lore dump about why synths are so cool and like all the cool shit about them. Celeste never sees it coming. Wait, wait. Celeste is dead? Dead, dead? Yeah, dead, dead. Y'all might be able to save her. I don't know. But in this moment, she is completely out of vitals. These three ghouls are still currently controlled by Dawson, and they are going to attack. That one, fail. Ten. Fifteen does hit for six flashing. This one. Yeah, I can make this one easy for me. With advantage. Eleven hit. Four slashing damage. Dawson. In this moment, you see one of the ghouls that you don't control reach out and tear into the throat of Celeste as she gurgles and falls forward. What do you do? I will say you have exactly one round to pick her up or she is gone. What care wounds work? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do cure wounds at my second level. Sixteen healing. Sixteen points of oh. healing is nothing to sneeze at. And it is more than the damage that was dealt by that ghoul in the nat 20. There is a moment of horrible, agonizing pain, Celeste, as you fall forward, feeling just so incredibly weak. Your vision blackens, and you feel sick. Your eyes shoot open once more as you take a shuddering breath and you reach up to your throat expecting to feel a horrible wound but there's just flesh a little slick but it's bubbling a little bit you look up and you see the face of dawson having miraculously healed you celeste pulls out her notebook and swiftly scribbles, there is nothing but darkness. And Holy out. shit! She's a scientist after all. She's gonna take that horrifying experience as a learning experience. You have a bonus action and half move. That is all you get for this turn, as you have come back from very as close as death as I'm ever going I to allow. I can't believe you're like, be careful guys, not 20, and then I'm the one who got hit. Yeah, you also <laughs> almost fucked walk. up someone with that nat 20, so... Oh, my Pretty dice good. are just not letting me have it tonight. Mm -hmm. Are they in a 10? Yeah, they're both 10 feet. Can I feed... No, can I feed these with... Wait, is my... Let me read my shit. Your elephant's foot? No, that is an action. Nope. It's only an action. Never mind, my turn's done. Yep, your turn is done. Dude. <sighs> uh, shit. Do you have Could any I bonus? stab this one? You only have a bonus action right now. Oh. Bonus. I don't um, think if I... you have anything to heal yourself, I reckon. I have my healer's kit, but it takes a action. You have a stim pack. I'll, let you, I... I'll allow stim packs as bonus actions because it's just like. Little quick stab. I could take that, but I need to delete it because I've actually already used that one when I got. Dad by Lucifer. No, you had two. I've already used that one. Oh. I got you. Then I will definitely use this one. Do I just roll it? Yeah. Here we go. 
Six points of healing. Honestly, a breath of fresh air as the stim pack immediately regenerates your blood flowing through your body. You feel just a little bit stronger. Take a deep breath, and you're back in the battle. Logan. I get, tw I get fucking hit with the 20 again. <laughs> fucking another nat 20. Like, Logan, this, this is a rough situation you're in as you're realizing these ghouls are just a little bit tougher from the influence of the Chupacabra. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use a stim pack. You should. Um, I'm the same as her, I only have a bonus action and... Have yes, because right? you were brought back. Uh, I can't really move away. Okay. Getting up would literally take the rest of my movement. Uh, you know what? Lipo is shielding me. I'll, I'll, I'll at least stand up. Stand up. That ghoulish reaver looks back at you as you, like, stand up, and it looks furious. And you can see its confusion as it's, like, you can't really speak ghoul. You don't really understand it, but, like, just in the body language, it's, like, stay down. Fuck you. As he's like, as he's like holding, like one of the one of the bigger wounds, like kind of closed. Yeah. One attack against Lipo and one attack against Lipo. Bad times for Lipos. Lipo gets hit. Nice. Now I will. Let me let me just look here real quick. No, never mind. I said Lipo doesn't have uncanny dodge yet. You sure don't, Lipo. You take 17 points of damage as this ghoul is just furious that you brought him back. The glowing one is off of our initiative, which takes us immediately to Lipo. Lipo takes his short sword back out. Mm -hmm. And... Which one? That front one there, that's the reaver, correct? That's the reaver. He's gonna shank it. You gotta do some shanking? I was so close to an at 20. Uh, 24, 9 piercing damage. Immediately, the blade sinks in. Sneak attack. 7 points of damage on top of that. The blade digs into the body of this ghoul. It is... There's just no blood that comes off of this creature, but every attack you slash and stab into these things, there's just no fluids within them. Unfortunate. Furious ghoul. It's going to attack one of its own. 18 hits. Little ghoul over here takes 6 points of slashing damage. These ghouls are not happy about what's happening here. One, two, three. Thirteen hits the reaver for nine. Fifteen hits the reaver for four. Seventeen hits the furious ghoul for four. I will let y'all know now. This ghoul and this ghoul are barely standing. Dawson, it is your turn. I'll move here. Mm -hmm. And and say uh, and say and ghoul, I'll feed you. You first must control yourself. How many rad points are you spending? You have six out of ten. How much you want to use? Five. Five? Roll a persuasion. You have a plus five on top of this. Come on. Damn. Seven. Plus, plus five. five. Twelve. Twelve. 
this ghoul immediately bends to you. The Reaver, however, looks at you and in in its own way with its it's not really language. It's just a lot of growling, hissing, and spitting spits upon your offer. That it will take what is its and it will become a glowing one itself. Celeste. Dawson, I'll see if you have anything else. Well, it's my action. I don't have any bonus action features yet. So, that is my turn. You know what? We, you know, we've been shooting this whole time. My spiritual oh. weapon? Your spiritual weapon. Yeah, fuck. That can move about 30 feet? What? Move 30 feet. I'll say it can be within range because it has been a couple turns. Okay. Roll! Spiritual weapon! Hold up, I just gotta do this real quick. Twenty two hits for ten force damage. It does have fortitude, however it is a DC fifteen con save. Fails. Yes. Oh my god. The blade the irradiated blade shoots up from the dirt, sways in the air for a moment, and becomes perfectly still. A quantum point as everything around it, this battle is chaos, irradiation and blood and death. The knife holds itself still and then shoots forward with immense speed and precision as that reaver looks at you and gets ready to swing out around back to Logan. As the blade strikes it right in the left temple and then goes all the way through to the right. As its brain is completely destroyed, it stands and twitches for just a moment before falling down, dead, unmoving. I shall grab. I shall look over Logan and be like, "Are you okay, brother?" I'm alive. I'll be fine. Uh, he'll walk over to Celeste, though, and he'll pull out his rat away. You're gonna need this. And he kind of just puts it in her hand, walks away from the ghouls, and immediately falls. He immediately just, like, falls on his ass. Just lays down, just goes ahead and just takes a little bit of a nap on the on the tracks right there. As... A token of my appreciation. I don't say anything, but I I take the um, rad rad away. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, he are you asleep? By the way, I would say he's more just laying there. Um, I'm just gonna use this by using a med kit on you to heal you up. Absolutely, go ahead. Uh, do your medicine check for me. It's wild. I have a plus eight in the fact that I roll horribly at times. Roll 2d4 plus two. There's the 2d4. And then plus two. Mm -hmm. So six, so seven. Seven points of healing back to Logan's. I'm also going to do a med kit on me. Because... Everyone's getting med kits, so. You do have limited uses of that. I do. I have 10 uses. I'm on eight right now. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a situation that everyone needs one, though. I'll say I'll let that medicine check roll if you want to just continue using it in this moment. Uh, how many times do you want to use it? Um, one for me, one for Lipo, and then one for Dawson. Do right. no. Don't heal me. I'm fine. Too late. I'm already doing it. <laughs> He's actually fine. I'm, oh, then I'll do it with Lipo. I'm very... Nothing I am bad ready. Happens, Dawson, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my pack over here. I'm gonna bring my pack over here. 
Ask some questions for me. Lipo was brought down to 8 HP. So go ahead and roll another 2d4 plus 2 for you, okay. uh, and then for Lipo, another 2d4. You're basically like administering a stim pack through your medkit. All right, so I got four. Fantastic. Lipo. Hey, you got six. Ooh. You ever design an encounter and you're like, yeah, this should be fine. Yeah. And then it almost completely fucking wipes the party. Yeah. No. I um, mean, I'm not saying that was definitely a pretty big difficulty spike, but... We did it. Yeah. We did it. Y'all, I will say the last, like, the super mutant fight, you did, like, disable the hardest part of that fight by, like, yelling at him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and calling him a coward, because okay, he did have a missile launcher. That, that is fair. Um... There was a mechanic to this one, and Dawson did activate it. It was just a little late. Dawson, as you oh, step no, away with your pack, uh, like just moving away from, you know, your compatriots and your comrades. What are you doing, buddy? Now, do you remember what it smelt like? The There's one that a... took your radiation. There's a consensus amongst your ghouls as they hiss and twitch at you, as they generally agree. They do know what took their their sustenance. Did you track it? Yes. Very well. Can you bring me to this person? This thing that took your sustenance? Yes. Very well. Thank you, ghouls. And one. Yes. Lest it be amongst the Adam. Among the Adam. One of the ghouls that had one hit points just dies. The other three are entirely on you. May the Adam guide him. What do you tell these three to do? I go. Get the tr get the scent. Tell me when you're ready. The three ghouls that you command, uh, they begin snuffling through the area as your companions in this moment take a moment to heal themselves. Celeste basically triaging your friends. So we've got a Got a little bit left here. Is there any? What's the scene we end on tonight? Uh, I just wanted to investigate this old building. This um, shack. Yeah, this shack. Logan uses all the scrap that he has to start making. Start making what? He starts making makeshift metal armor. That's a hell of a good choice. Logan, you begin taking that decent stra scrap you have, and you begin looking around you for something else. You see that there's some chairs that are just... No one's using these damn chairs. Yeah. He literally just starts stripping everything he can in this general... In this, like... Just whatever metal he can find. <laughs> you begin working on that as Celeste. You approach this shack a little curiously. This is a railway shack. There's only, um, it's 
on stilts and elevated up. There's a stairway that leads up into this shack. Do you want to head in there? Yes, but I'm having my rifle at the ready. <laughs> you head into this shack, rifle at the ready, moving forward slowly. Go ahead and do a perception check for me. Oh, perception? Oh. Please don't fail me, Dice. You've been tormenting me. Oh, thank you. As you move forward into this room, the smell of death is overwhelming. As you look around and you see a corpse, a terminal, and a forty-five revolver with a scope on it. I take that. Triumph. Through all of it, at least you finally have a scope. Yep. <laughs> that scope is going straight up on my rifle. You, in this moment, looking around, this is a small save. A little, a little... It seems like someone was trying to settle in here. You see a guitar, you see a duffel bag, you see some pot, you... But the real treasure here was that gun that you may have passed up. Maybe there's something to that Adam after all, as that is where we will end our session uh, for tonight. I can't believe I died. Yeah, you straight up almost fucking died. Ah, damn. That was rough. Hello there, everybody. It's me, your Game Master, Jesse. We've got into the part of the program where I'd like to thank a few folk and organizations. Because I have to. <laughs> and I'd like to start by thanking Sirenscape for their fantastic program and sound sets that really bring our game to life. You can check them out at Sirenscape.com. Because epic games need epic sound. A complete list of credits can be found in our show notes. I would also love to thank all of the amazing creatives out here who are working on this very niche interest. Fallout tabletop content is hard to come by, let alone good Fallout content. Our setting is very much inspired by Steel Draco's work on their Savage World campaign and all the work they did was foundational so that this Lone Star range could exist. Many of our maps come from a fantastic artist by the name of Zekthar. You can find a link to their itch.io shop with all the maps we use on this stream in the show notes. And, as always, this game would not be possible without the fantastic modders and uh, just amazing team of creators over at Foundry Virtual Tabletop. The game wouldn't work without y'all and I wouldn't work without the game. Or Foundry. This is my job. And I would like to thank you, our audience. As much as I really love running this game for my group, we hoped that you would love it too. And if you really want to support the show, a follow, a like, a subscribe goes a long way. But if you want to go that extra mile, our Ko-Fi is listed in the show notes. Monetary support is the best support. Most times. Emotional support's pretty good too. And if you want to get more involved with our community, we have a Discord. Join us there. An invite link will be posted in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you had fun. I know I did.